Um, we're recording. All right, welcome to another episode of Fixing Your Agile Coaching. So we've gotten a ton of comments that you're enjoying this show. And so our past few with Stephanie were great. And so I thought, you know what, let's keep it going. So I reached out to a very good friend of mine, uh, Joe Peril. Joe, it's so great to see you. And I'm so happy that you're doing well. Um, how are you? Hey, Ryan, it is so great to see you, um, in, especially in all of this craziness. And I'm doing well, thanks. It's been great. an interesting year and a bit. Yeah. So for those of you not familiar with Joe Peril, Joe is uh, just an, an excellent agile coach out of South Africa. And so she's uh, typically, is it Johannesburg? You're in Joburg still? <laughs> It is. Yep. yep. So she's working in that area, um, has worked for a number of companies out there, um, doing a lot of work with remote coaching, remote facilitation, a lot of those areas now. Um, but just an, an awesome scrum trainer, an awesome scrum coach, um, awesome agile coach, just one of my most favorite people in our community. So Joe, I'm super pumped that, that you decided to do this and I can't wait to see what we explore. Thanks so much, Ryan. I'm super pumped that you invited me. It's great to be here today. Yeah, of course. So something that I know you're passionate about lately, um, it's something that I'm um, I'm curious about this topic. And so I'm actually, I'm going to be an eager learner as I ask these questions, but I know this is something you've been talking about lately. Uh, some of the things, you know, maybe we'll start with this idea of what are some of the core things that agile helping agile coaching can help with when it comes to both personal and organizational resilience, right? Resilience has been a big term, especially with 2020. Um, I think we all want to forget that year, but I think it also kind of taught us that, that we are resilient, mm -hmm. but I think there's been a lot of agile coaching that's gone into organizations to help with that. And I'm just curious, we'll start with the big thoughts and then maybe kind of zero in as, uh, as, as I need to, to really level up on this as well. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, it's something that I've been thinking about quite a lot, especially with 2020 and everything that happened. What are the things that like, organizations need to do and what are the things that we as humans need to do to think about our resilience and to to improve our resilience and, and to help us? I don't believe that the rates of change in this world are going to get slower. It feels like things happen faster, products come to market quicker, people change their mind. There's, there's so many different things. If we think about the last year, it wasn't just COVID that caused huge reactions in so many different industries and so many disruptions. There was the uh, the boat that got stuck in the sewers. There's been weather. There's been all kinds of different things that I think have such a big impact on our industries and our product developments and, and just like building businesses or keeping businesses going in 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 these climates and so there's so many things that uh, i think are important and uh, to help us to be resilient and and then i think about well what do i mean by resilience because that's a that's a great starting point right well what the hell does resilience mean right <laughs> and I, and i think if you look it up it, it's it's kind of different for for so for so many people but the the way that i've been thinking about it is you know that we can adapt to change that when change comes along, it doesn't shatter or kill us or make things really difficult or we lose a large part of our business or ourselves or whatever it is. It's that we can take that change, we can uh, make it our own or we can uh, kind of absorb it really quickly and then we can move on and do something different using what we've learned or we can find new possibilities or new options to go forward using whatever has happened, whatever that change has brought forward for us. So I think that's kind of where I'm coming from, from a resilience perspective is like, is is taking change and instead of being scared of that change, um, using that change for opportunity, using that change as a way to grow stronger and um, and to, to think about, well, well what, what's next and, and how can we grow, grow, grow stronger um, if when we're hit by these things that are just un take us by surprise, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think that's an interesting, that's a, that's a really good setup. Right. And it's something that, um, you know, with, with agile for humans, Todd and I have really had to focus and, and basically decide no matter what was going on, 
Um, and maybe this is part of the resilience. I, I'm not sure, but basically anything that would happen, good or bad, we would say, great, what new opportunity is here? Mm. As opposed to getting stuck in the drama, getting stuck in the in the self-pity, getting which is, re I'm really good at that. I'm mm. really good at just wallowing in that for a while. But we finally figured out like, all right, what opportunity is here, good or bad? And it just seemed like it would just propel us inch by inch. Right. You're not making huge strides what I in, in these type of environments. Right. Well, that's not what I have found. It's really just can we keep a just a, a it's almost like the idle on a car. Right. Can we just keep idling forward just a little bit, not get stuck? Um, <laughs> is that kind of the stuff you're thinking about or, or, or talking about or am I am I off here? No, no, I am. That's that's exactly a lot of the stuff that I'm thinking about is how do we how do we not get stuck, basically? Right. So, and, and as humans, how do we not get stuck? But just also as, and, and as organizations, how do we not get stuck? How do we not get stuck or not get lost or not lose a lot of what we're trying to do or our essence? And how do we, how do we create spaces that are, that where that can easily adapt to change? So what are the things that need to happen so that whatever, whatever is going on in a new market or whatever is going on for new product developments or whatever is going on um, with our own internal humanness we can actually uh, it's easy for us to absorb that and to do something different because we can see new possibilities so yeah so what are, how do we do how do we teach people to do that as humans and i think that there's something in agile coaching that can can definitely do that for the individuals within an organization is teaching them how to um how to be better at change and creating the mechanisms of support for that and then also at an organizational level what are some things that people might need to look at at an organizational level to to mean that uh, you can absorb these changes easier and and move on. Yeah, so when you go into an organization, Joe, or when you start working with a new organization, what are, the, what are some of the signs that you see that would tell you this organization needs help with resilience, that they might be stuck, that, that people are not adapting? Like, what have you seen that would kind of be an indicator of, oh, they, this is an opportunity to to help in this area? That's a great question, Ryan. Um, there's a few things that, uh, and it's kind of different in different contexts. Yeah. So um, in some contexts, what I've seen a lot of is big hierarchical structures that mean it's very difficult to get things done or to get things moving and um, where people are almost incapable of making decisions, I think, because they're waiting for somebody else to either ratify that decision or, um, or, or they just don't think that they're just don't think that they're allowed. So some of that, um, I've also seen in some organizations poor leadership in that respect, where people are afraid to make good, uh, decisions yep. because they're just scared to get shouted at and all of that. Um, some of the things that I'm noticing at the moment is that that, and I think this is like a a, a trigger for peeps if they if they want to think about it is is that oh we've done that before and it didn't work um, yeah. because even even though we do things when circumstances and situations change um, the context around us changes and so sometimes just because we did something once in when the business looked like a doesn't mean that now if we try it again with some minor changes and tweaks that it won't work um, and so this like this this inability to like revisit things is one thing that I that uh, that I notice that that I think is definitely a sign that people might be stuck. So this kind of, oh no, we've done that already and it didn't work. Um, sometimes that's a thing. Um, also where, where people are just uh, longing for the days of yesteryear that, oh, we, things used to be fun or we used to do things this way, or yeah. we want to go back to the way things were, or we want to go back to doing things the old way. Um, and a lot of that, I think, is also a, a sign for me is that is that wanting to be back is a very human thing, right? When when change comes along for us, we want to we want to go back to what was familiar and what was easy and what um, what worked for us. Or, but sometimes the situation has changed enough that we can't that we need to move past that. Um, or sometimes just if we want to grow as a human, we need to embrace that. Uh, so, you know, it's great that some t 
sometimes it's easier to just go back to doing what we were doing before, but there's, there's not always growth in that either for yourself as a person or for the organization as a whole. And so like encouraging people to step into that newness and into that growth with their, with their eyes on what are new possibilities here um, right. or what could be new possibilities here for us uh, is, is what I, I try to do is try to work with, um, with people to help them see those things, like where are these new options and possibilities? Yeah, I, I something I found too is that a lot of the time, how do you know? You, you know, they're not measuring anything, they're not looking at any kind of data, and so as they're longing for the past, it's some false illusion because the past was horrible. Mm -hmm. Right. It was the same. We were still upset talking at the water cooler. We were still not delivering any, but it, but it felt, but for some reason there's this nostalgia. Right. And I, and what I, what I've run into a lot is it's like, well, how do you know the past? If we go back, it would be better. And mm -hmm. like, oh, well, I don't know. And it's like, so maybe we could work on that. Maybe part of the resilience here is, you know, what could we measure to show that we're getting better? How could we actually prove that the change is actually positive? And I found in most organizations, they're not even looking at that. In my personal life, I was not looking at that in 2020, mm. you know, and, and I don't know about, um, I mean, we have totally different contexts, right? The United States is like this totally different, uh, weird entity as, as compared to like South Africa or Europe or, or wherever else. But in, in, in the U.S., we were just getting bombarded with information. It's like, mm. you know, 10 more people died today in I mean, I, I wish it was that that number was that, that low or, you know, a thousand more COVID cases reported in the last 20 minutes or and it was just a nonstop, constant, constant, constant. And what I found was we were getting no value out of it except getting scared. Mm -hmm. And so part of the personal resilience, and, and I think this applies to organizations, was we really had to narrow our, our, our focus. Mm -hmm. And so we actually canceled cable and shut off the news. And like we were concerned about our immediate family, but we didn't kind of, we weren't looking further out. Like we weren't looking for problems. Like we had to figure out how do we keep our kids safe? You know, what do we do with schools? How do we, how do, how did Todd and I reinvent our, our company? Like, but we really narrowed everything down. And I wonder if organizations kind of took that route too, because you mentioned hierarchies. What if they could really flatten that out? and really focus on what they're investing on and only have a few things in flight at once. And, and I think that's the, you know, maybe that's a big lesson for me during 2020 and the, the COVID era is that that narrowing of focus allowed me to cope with everything else going on because I was just, I couldn't handle, you know, all of this and, and the world's important. I'm not saying it isn't, but I personally could not process you know, the, the sadness of the entire world and keep my four walls sane. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I, I had a, a very similar, a very similar uh, way of thinking as well, or a very similar experience, should I say, is that I also just, I, I, sh I had to shut off a lot of that overload of information in order to just be able to focus on what I needed to focus on. And yeah. I think that data is super important for organizations and for humans to get the data that they need in, in, in the moments that they need it. But I think it's also important to be discerning about what data is right for us at the time, you know, and how much data we can consume and what is, um, what's adding to our anxiety and stress level and what's adding to, um, helping us make decisions better, you know? So what's, yeah. what's the, the, the noise, in the, the signal to noise ratio, because it can be so easy to get sucked into so many things, uh, especially nowadays, like you say, there's just this information everywhere and it's so easy to get information on so many different topics. And so it's super important, um, to streamline, I think. And I think that that's like exactly what you say, for organizationally, what we did also is we, you know, we picked our battles, we streamlined the things that we were focusing on. We really, we, we ran quite a few experiments, which I think was useful as well, but we weren't trying to run a million experiments at once, right? We were thinking about, um, 
what new markets might what what is this new world going to look like on the other side what trends are we starting to see what new patterns might be emerging and so let's let's test out a few things in in some of those spaces um and i think that that's also part of the 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 resilience thing is is also around um looking at the right kind of data so that you can make decisions to run some small like you said those things that just keep let, let's like we're going to take one step and we're going to test and we're going to see and then we're going to get right. data and we're going to come back and decide like okay cool is this worth investing more of our time more of our money more of our energy into because we're getting information back that says yes it is or or we're not and then we can kill it um so it's also about figuring out how can we create these these um create ways where it's easy for our organization to do these, you know, to, to test something out and then, um, and then either amplify it because it's working or pull it back because it's not working. Uh, and, and we, we see no future for it as, as a product, for example, as a service, or it's just something that we want to try in a new market. And, and, and that for me as well is also about uh, thinking about that from, a resilient standpoint is your hierarchy getting in the way of that maybe or uh does your organizational structure enable you to do that or what might be a small change that you could make that could just test out even at an organizational uh in an organizational perspective if that could work for you or if you could if you could um create the space for a small team like that to thrive in a larger in a larger organization or what might that look like yeah, I, I, I love that. I, I think that um, agile coaching in the in the future can still be be very relevant. I think if the focus is on this resilience, you know, mm -hmm. kind of narrowing the field of vision, you know, people will ask, I think a good follow up question, um, if we were to end it here, people in the comments would say, well, what's a good metric? Right? Mm -hmm. And I, and, and for me, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I love the lean metrics, right? You have cycle time, throughput, item aging, and whip limits. I think start, if you don't have anything, start there. Mm. Um, I think that's a, a great place to start. But the question I ask about the things that we measure, and Joe, maybe you've got a better question, is what am I going to do differently based on knowing this information? Mm. And if I can't, if I don't know what I would do differently, I don't look at the information. Right. Because I, like you said, the signal to noise ratio, you need a lot more signal than noise, right? You want, you want good signal. And if I cannot figure out how I would make a different decision or change a behavior based off of knowing a number or a, a or a fact, mm. I don't think I need to see it. Right. And that's subject to change, right? Maybe in the future that will be important, but right now, if it's not actionable, I don't think I need to see it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's a great approach to it. Um, thinking about, I, I throw in like, I, I also want more than one. So it's cool to yeah. measure stuff, but like, I want to measure things that might be important for me, things that I might want to change. Exactly like you said, what am I going to do differently if I have this information? Or um, another question I like to ask is, what can I learn if I have this information? What yeah. will this information? What, what what will I know now? What will I know that I didn't know before? So what can I learn from having this information? Or how can this information help me to change or achieve something? Um, or 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 sometimes it's like it, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of a target. You know, people sometimes need a target um, yep. to keep them excited about stuff. So sometimes a number is a useful target. Sometimes it's terrible, um, but if it's done right, it can be like it can be a, a quite a useful target. Um, and and I love your kind of what am I going to do differently question. I think that's such a an awesome question to ask. Once I have this information, what will I what will I change, or how will it enable me to change things? Yeah. And so it sounds like to me, this idea of resilience is it, it, it's multifaceted. And I, and I love how this is kind of kind of wrapping together. Um, we need a target. We need a purpose. Let's say a purpose. Right. Why are we actually here? What are we doing? What are we trying to achieve? How are we going to go about doing that with the most narrow of focus possible? Limit distraction, get the unimportant stuff out of the way, flatten the hierarchies, remove the impediments, all of those great things. And then how will we validate that? How do we know we got there? And I think those are the measurements and the metrics, but only the most important ones that will actually alter our behavior along the journey. And we kind of filter the rest out. And I think that's a good framework 
resilience. And I think that also kind of gives the agile coach many areas where they could be effective and influential um, if they choose to kind of kind of follow along. Does that have I have I brought that together in a in a reasonable way? Yeah, you've done a great job at summarizing. All right. <laughs> It, there's there's one thing there's one thing that I would add to that is is also um, you know if we wanted to if we wanted to experiment on on things that we weren't doing you know right yeah. now um, how could we how could we how could we test test for change if that makes sense you know yeah, yeah. so we're not just like um, making wild sweeping changes we're doing these you know we're testing the waters in small increments and you know as you say getting that feedback fast fast feedback so so like and and, and when i think about that I, sometimes i think about that change as a like changing our own um systems of work kind of thing as well as changing our our products or even a, you know, exploring new things that we would try. What are the small things that we could do so that we can create exactly what you said? We can create this focus. So we're not trying to do a bazillion things. We're running small experiments to test, and then if it doesn't work, we can just we can just, we can just shut it down. There you go. Shut well, and, and and we will we will be shutting this one down shortly. I think that this also applies to um, personal as well, like realizing small changes in our behavior. Right. I don't know about you, Joe, but I can easily get sucked into drama and gossip and and like the infight and, and someone else's problems become my problems. And suddenly mm -hmm. I'm feeling emotionally about something else. And and so I've had to cut that back because mm -hmm. I can't feel feel for the world. And and so even making changes in our own behavior that we, you know, as agile coaches, we got to get ourselves right. We got to get ourselves centered. And so even those little changes in our behavior start having an outward impact on organizations too. And, and if we're not watching that, I think we just kind of get pulled in these directions that we don't want to be in and our mental states get are at risk. And so keep an eye on all that stuff too, everybody. Make sure that you're engaged in the things you want to be engaged in, that you're um, feeling the, the right things and that, that uh, makes sense in the moment. And uh, hopefully that gets us to that that one step further along the path of that personal resilience, right? That's great advice, Ron. Love it. All right. Well, it's the only, it's the only advice I know because I keep falling into those traps. So, <laughs> but, uh, I think, yeah, I like that, Joe. Thanks for the, the discussion on resilience. I'm going to throw up the end screen here. Um, actually, no, I'm not, I'm going to come back. So that's not, I, we got one more thing to chat about Joe. Hmm. Um, I know you're into a lot of um, interesting uh, remote work. Is there any th any ways that people can follow up with you? Um, any ways that people can check out your work? You know, anything you'd like to share? Oh, that's very exciting. Thanks so much, Ryan, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I'm su super excited to be working with two wonderful ladies in the, the field of remote facilitation. And we actually have a really, really awesome remote facilitation course that we're running at the moment. Uh, and if you go to the remotecoaches.com, uh, then uh, you will find a whole lot of awesome resources there. Uh, you'll find our course that is running. We're running it in a US friendly time zone in August. Uh, and we are running it in a kind of Europe friendly time zone from uh, next week. So it might be a little bit late to register for the one in July, which is starting on Monday, but the August one is still open. And um, the time zone is friendly enough that you could do it whether you're in the US or whether you're in Europe. Um, so we'd love to see you there. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm really excited about awesome. and have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really, it's such a rewarding course to facilitate because it feels like people really get a lot out of it. Yeah. So we've yeah, had great yeah. in, the, in this new world, I think remote facilitation is critical and uh, keeping people engaged. And, and so Joe's one of the best. And so if this is an area that you need to, to, to consider, if you're thinking about leveling up, I cannot think of a better way to do it. So join, join the, or join Joe, the remote coaches, right? Remotecoaches.com. And uh, yeah, check this out. I think it's really good stuff. Thanks All right. so much, Ryan. Of course. All right, everybody. That is a, this episode of Fixing Your Agile Coaching. Hit the like and subscribe button so you know when we drop a new episode of this and many other shows. Check out the socials. 
So a lot of cool stuff out there, especially on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Todd and I are a little old for Instagram. We're not quite, I, I don't understand how to use it, but we're working on it. Um, some videos are going to pop up right about now. And so you'll have some options to check out some other shows. We hope you check them out and like them as well. And uh, yeah, I hope resilience was a good topic for you this week. We'll, we'll be back next week with another episode with Joe. And uh, yeah, leave your comments. Let us know what you think. Until next time, uh, be resilient.